So I want to share this question I got from uh, one of my online students because it's kind of deep and it's not about just playing the saxophone. It's about the saxophone uh, music as a lifestyle, trying to build a musical career, what to do when you're frustrated, when to know, you know, how do you know when you should keep going or do something else? A lot of deep stuff like that. I'm just going to jump in. I've changed his name to protect the innocent. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'll read the, the email, the questions, so you can kind of get the whole picture and then we'll go back and just address these, some of these things because there's some really good stuff in here. Um, we'll just go one by one with it. Hi, Bob. I'm in a pretty tough place with my music at the moment. I feel so flat and I'm so close to dropping it all. I hate practicing, my sound sucks, and I'm struggling to find where my career path may go. I hear people like Chris Potter, Branford Marsalis, Joshua Redman, and others, and I think, shit, I just can't sound that good. You seem to be a normal guy, and I thought you may have crossed or perhaps approached this bridge that I'm stuck at right now. Since last summer, I've been working a side job a couple days a week as a digital media manager for a conference. I've enjoyed it, I'm good at it, and I'm delivering results the bosses are pleased with. I also get to work with some great people at Facebook, Google, etc. I was even headhunted by another company, but I turned that job down mainly because I didn't want to give up my performing and teaching. Um, okay, then there's the financial aspect. Where I live is very expensive, probably on par with New York. Um, the gigs don't pay much, and there are so many sax players chasing the few gigs that there are, I've lost the stomach for the fight. I don't want to turn into a cynical, booze-soaked, nasty old jazz musician with a messed up domestic situation and masses of debt. Whoa, I gotta read that again. I don't want to turn into a cynical, booze-soaked, nasty old jazz musician with a messed up domestic situation and masses of debt. We're gonna come back to that, that's a heavy one. Um, I've had some amazing opportunities to play with some pretty wonderful players, but I'm sick of feeling like I'm faking it. Lay people think I'm a good player, and how could I ever consider wasting my talent by dropping music? But my wife says I'm a nicer guy to be around when I'm away from music, and I have to agree that sitting in a room with my horn just isn't something that turns me on much anymore, if it ever did. And listening to my own stuff depresses the hell out of me. So my questions are, one, have you ever had or gone through this? And if so, what helped? And number two, uh, are there any books you would recommend? Okay, a lot in there. So let's just go back to the top. I can totally relate this. You feel like you're listening to these people you admire, but you're so far away from sounding like them, and then you, you, know, you go to do whatever it is you do when you practice, and it just doesn't seem to be closing the gap at all. What do you do? Um, I, I, there's a video I have on YouTube. I don't remember what it's called, but I definitely, it was something like along the lines of what to do when you feel like not practicing or giving up. or I, you know, I, I very often feel that, uh, that feeling of like I want to throw the saxophone at the wall. Less often these days than I used to, but it, it's still there. It, and, and in some ways it's worse because it's like I've been playing so long. I mean, I've been playing over 20 years. How can it still be this difficult, this challenging? The flip side of that is that's, you know, you got, I, I have to look at that as, well, that's the exciting part. If it were not exciting, I mean, if it weren't sort of frustrating and challenging anymore, then I'd probably be bored with it and I'd have no interest in it, okay? So, look, you keep listening to great music constantly. Just keep listening to great music because for me that's always what inspires me. Um, Maybe you need to listen to fewer saxophone players if that's starting to bum you out and listen to other people for inspiration. And like I always talk about, and, and Doug knows this because he's just been a student of mine, you know, I, this is why I think fundamentals will save your ass every day and twice on Sundays. Because the more you connect with playing your instrument like on a fundamental level, the more you can just get the um, difficulties of playing that instrument out of the way, the more that you're freed up to just feel and be in music the way you want to and not be trying to play regurgitated stuff that you've worked out. So I find long tones to be not only helpful for my sound, but meditative, you know. Um, I also find that, and this is sort of on a different topic, but that if I can get, if I can aim for 30 minutes a day or 30 minutes, you know, five days a week of practice time, I'll end up getting more. But it's when I think that oh, I don't have two hours to practice, uh, so I won't bother that's when things start to go wrong. That's when I don't like myself very much, and, you know, and I'm, I'm not as nice to my family, etc. cetera. Um, okay, I'm gonna jump around a little bit. Towards the end, he says that, um, you know, he, he's sick of trying to chase these gigs. There's so many saxophone players and not enough gigs. Um, and that lay people 
think he's a good player, how could, I ever, how could you ever consider wasting your talent and dropping music? I know that feeling, man. But sure, isn't it so easy for everybody else to be like, oh, you're so talented and you should, you know, it's like I have a couple of kids right now. now anytime a kid bangs on anything, like what do people say? They're like, oh, he should be a drummer. Or like, look, oh, his fingers are so long. He should be a piano player. Or like, oh my goodness, look at the, this, that, and the other. She should be a dancer. Like nobody ever says, oh my goodness, um, her fingers look so, so small and delicate. She should be a, a programmer or an accountant or like nobody says that stuff people always say this like oh you should be an actor or, you know I don't know what it is but, but I think it's just that as humans you know since the beginning of time right like we've expressed ourselves whether it's drawing cavemen drawing on on cave walls and whatnot we express ourselves through through arts through art music and dance through art music and movement and whatever so the spiritual side of us all as a race you know longs to do those things um, trying to make a career out of them is, an is a different thing entirely. Um, so don't let, I guess what I'm saying here is um, this pairs with the part where he's talking about he has some other stuff going on that he's enjoying, um, but he, he turned down an opportunity to go further with that because he didn't want to give up the performing and teaching. You have to be careful here in that I'm not saying you should give up performing and teaching. I'm not saying this to anybody. But if you are holding on to performing and teaching, and you don't love it anymore, but you're holding on to it because you've done it so long that you feel like you need to keep doing it, and or you're doing it because you have these people over here who say, oh, Doug, you're so good, you should never let that go, but you don't really feel that, then that's not a good place to be in. Yeah, I've gone through this stuff multiple times. I mean, I experience so much self-doubt on a weekly basis. If you were inside my head, you would think I was crazy, and I probably am, but um, always, over the years, as much as I've gotten in sort of different levels of despair, you know, periodically thinking, wow, this is not working, it's not going to come together, I'm not going to have this career or that career, um, somewhere in all of that, there's always been at least enough of a small light that said, okay, you're really upset right now, but you know that this is actually where, where you want to be heading, you know? Um, if that were gone, then then I don't know, then I would think seriously. But every time I considered, well, I should go to law school or maybe I'll go back to school to be a graphic designer or maybe I will shift entire, you know, not not entirely, but sort of to make, make a major pivot to trying to be just a, like a media composer, film composer, whatever. Every time I've tried different things, I know that it's not really where I'm supposed to be and something pulls me back. But it is certainly not easy. The first few years I was living in New York, I worked for Red Bull Energy Drink. I worked at a temp agency. I played wedding and bar mitzvah gigs that I absolutely detested, um, you know, and I balanced all these different things. I had no really cool sideman gigs. I had really nothing going on. I had this one band I was a part of called the Jonah Smith Band, and I really enjoyed that, and I was good at that. I liked playing in that kind of a soulful singer-songwriter environment. I liked being a saxophone in the environment. I knew I had something to offer there, uh, and that's what leads me to my next point, which is you want to look for what is unique to you. What can you offer? And it's not enough to just say, "Well, I want to play the saxophone or be good at, you know, be a woodwind player or whatever." No, what you know, what do you do that's that's unique, different, and special? Um, as I know that sounds a little bit like life coachy or whatever, but hey, uh, you know, no, no two people have the same fingerprints, and no two people, even as musicians or as artists, can offer the same exact thing. I might greatly admire Joshua Redman and think his career would be really cool to have, but I am not him. I don't come from his family. I didn't grow up when he grew up. I didn't listen to the music he listened to. I don't play like him. I don't didn't go to the college he went to. I didn't live in New York when he lived. In, you know, all these things. I'm not going to get to have his blueprint. Okay. And he's not going to get to have somebody else's and I'm not going to get to have anybody else's. You're only going to get yours. And I wasted a lot of years trying to, trying to copy other people's paths and blueprints. Um, and it would always leave me coming up short and jealous and feeling slightly uh, jaded and bitter and all those things. So to that, that chunky sentence in the middle uh, where, where Doug says, I don't want to turn into a cynical, booze-soaked, nasty, nasty old jazz musician with a messed up domestic situation and masses of debt. Well, then you need to look at your life, you know, what's the big picture? You know, what are the things that you want? What are the things you don't want? You got to, you got to zoom out, man. It's when we get too, sometimes we get too in it into the particular stuff and just the daily nitty gritty. And trust me, I'm so guilty of this with my own, my own world. Um, it, 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 your vision becomes myopic and it's hard to see the big picture. And you need to pull back and see the big, big picture because sometimes enough things have changed that you might go, oh, wow, you know what? I really need to go in this direction. Well, I'm, I'm particularly drawn to the part of this email where he's talking about uh, having some other 
he's working as a digital media manager and these are the words that stuck out to me enjoying it good at it and delivering results those are things to watch out for i'm not saying you should go full tilt and just give up the saxophone you got to look at what gives you joy though right you know and if that's something that gives you joy and it's paying the bills and it allows you to support your family and all that's well and good and maybe that's where you focus and the music becomes no of course you're not going to let it go but maybe then you don't have to care as much about the gigs or you can be the one that is calling other people instead of the one waiting to get called um you can decide you know pick your own spots to play and hire the people you want to play i mean you can you can reframe it it's i think that's what what's necessary is you have to keep looking at it and reframing it and make sure that you're looking at the whole picture through your lens and not somebody else's lens or somebody else's definition of success because then you, you it's you're always going to be you're always going to lose every single time and i'm saying this to you but i'm kind of saying it to myself because i'm just as guilty of it you know it never fails if i go on any sort of social media and see peers of mine or people that I looked up to, they're doing this festival, this gig, this tour, this recording. I'm, it's, it'll always make me jealous every time. I'll always be like, oh, well, how come I'm not doing that? I wish I was doing that. Blah, 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 blah. It's not a healthy way to look at things. I still am guilty of it. But, you know, so zoom out. Look at the big picture. Look at for what look for what you do that's unique and different. What are the things? And, and and often you'll get this feedback. You know, people will tell you stuff. And I don't mean just the person who's like, oh, you're so talented. You know, you don't give up your dreams or whatever. Screw them. Like, listen to yourself. Listen to your own heart. Um, as far as books that I could recommend, I read a book uh, years ago, and I was particularly in a in a dark spot called The Power of Positive Thinking by. Um, God, what's the guy's name? Norman Norman Peel or something? Google it. Power of Positive Thinking. It's an old book, and you know, again, it sounds a little life coachy, but I was in an, I was in uh, need of a little life coaching, and it was helpful. Um, I you know I remember that it was helpful at the time, and I do believe so much of what we uh, so much of our outcomes, you know, we're not as fast to acknowledge as, as acknowledge this as we should be, but it starts with with your mind, man, you got to get your mind straight, you know, and you got to listen to your heart and all these things that sound a little goofy, but they're true. You know, they're cliches for a reason. Oh, the other book was actually one that I haven't read, but my mom always talks about it. It's called like Finding Your Strengths or Strengths Finder or Strengths Finder 2.0. There's even like a test you can go online and take. I think she loves it and she's raved to me about it because it really helps pinpoint what you're really uniquely gifted at. And I think so often it's easy for us to chase down paths that we just because we've that's what we've always done. And I've seen this happen because I went to an arts high school and then I went to a good music college. And after each one of those things, I saw people who were just they were carrying the baton because that's what you know, they grew up playing piano and they were okay at it and they got some praise and then they went into high school and okay, they did that and then they went to college for it. Now they're out in life and they don't really have a vision for what they're gonna do with it. But that's what they've always done, so they keep doing it, and they feel like they're going to feel really guilty if they let it go. And I am not encouraging you or anybody to let it go. I'm encouraging you to be self-aware and analyze your whole picture and be, be willing to, if not let it go, reframe or change the circumstances and know that that is perfectly okay because you have to be finding joy with making music. Otherwise, come on, what's the point, man? You might as well just be, I don't, I don't know, doing some sort of manual labor that you don't want to do, right? So anyway, before I ramble off in other territory, I've gone on long enough. I hope that is um, that is some there's some helpful nuggets in there. Just just know that look, I'm in my late 30s and I've gone through these ups and downs many times. Uh, I know it's not over. Um, I get bummed out about all sorts of stuff all the time. Uh, I do just ca- try to keep coming back to this, like you know what, what? Okay, I might be good at these four things, but which one am I great at? You know, and and do more of that. Um, I'm constantly trying to remind myself of that. So I would just encourage you to do the same. Obviously, you keep working on everything. You want to be you know, sharpening your skills, getting better, etc. But just be aware. A lot of the time, a lot of times, things that you're really great at, they're right under your nose and you don't notice them because you take them for granted because they're just so familiar. They're just things you don't even think about doing. And yet those are the very things that make you uh, unique and make they may be the key that unlocks that next door that that you need to open for you. So good luck, Doug, and and anybody else watching this who's um, got similar battles going on.